in the previous lecture video we looked at the definition of PPC which is just a collection of points representing different production choices available to a firm given its resources and technology then we also drew the PPC and we know what do points on PPC mean what do points of PPC mean and towards the end I introduced you to the concept of opportunity cost and what we have what we have discussed there is because we face a constraint of resources it could be time it could be money it could be factors of production or what we call in economics scarcity of resources and so when we have scarcity of resources we'll have a number of options available to us or number of choices available to us and because of that we'll be forced to decide and when we decide we incur a cost called opportunity cost so opportunity cost is what you give up in order to gain something this is the most general definition of opportunity cost now let us use this in the context of mark jeans incorporated so what will be opportunity cost of western cut jeans that will be the amount of baggy jeans you would give up or the firm would give up when you decide to increase production of western cut jeans by one unit opportunity cost of western cut jeans and we can measure this as well in precise terms and that will be opportunity cost of western cut jeans is change in baggy jeans divided by change in western cut jeans and you know what this ratio would mean we had looked at it from the slope side when we discussed tools we use in mathematics and so what would this uh, represent by how many units we have to reduce production of baggy jeans when production of western cut jeans increases by one unit and let us now calculate these numbers so we know opportunity cost of western cut jeans is change in baggy jeans divided by change in western cut jeans and when we use the term change what we have in mind is just figure out the difference between two consecutive numbers so let us do these calculations for this table suppose the firm is sitting at a point like a and decides to move to a point like b when it does that what it is doing is it is increasing the production of western cut jeans by 1000 units and when it does that it has to give up baggy jeans and by how much 1000 units so let us do this calculation of opportunity cost of western cut jeans when the firm moves from a point like a to a point like b and this will be 4 minus 5 divided by 1 minus 0 and this will give you negative 1 let us just ignore the last column now suppose the firm is moving at a point like b and decides to move to a point like c what will be opportunity cost of western cut jeans it will be 3 minus 4 divided by 2 minus 1 and again this will give you negative 1 in this way we can calculate opportunity cost of western cut jeans for other movements as well now this table is getting messy so what i'll do is i'll provide you with a cleaner version of this as I promised, now you have a cleaner table. And as you can see, what we have figured out is opportunity cost uh, of Western cut jeans between all points. And we know, we have, I have already shown to you when the firm moves from A to B, what will be the opportunity cost of Western cut jeans. We calculated this. When the firm is sitting at B, decides to move to a point like C, what will be the opportunity cost of western cut jeans and so on and this way you can do rest of the calculations and what you'll find is opportunity cost of western cut jeans is negative one throughout 
And, and why is this negative one or this number is fixed all throughout? Consider the following. Let me draw an informal diagram so you can see what is happening. <clears throat> and we have western cut genes on the horizontal axis as in thousands. And we have baggy genes. I'll not write thousand. I'm running out of thought. I could write it here. Baggy genes on the vertical axis. And we drew a PPC. Now, what is opportunity cost of western cut genes? It is change. I'll just use triangle to represent change. Change in baggy genes divided by change in western cut genes. And what you find is the following. On the y-axis, what we have is baggy genes. And what do we have on the x-axis? It is western cut genes. Or in other words, this is simply change in y divided by change in x. Or in other words, opportunity cost of a good on the horizontal axis is the same thing as slope of PPC. Slope of PPC. And what this means is the following. If opportunity cost is a fixed number, that is, it doesn't change. It's like negative 1 all throughout. What this represents is a constant cost or constant slope, sorry, constant slope. And when do we have constant value of slope? When we are looking at a straight line. So in terms of this example, this particular example, what we have is a straight line PPC. And what does it represent? It represents constant opportunity cost. Now, based on the definition of opportunity cost of Western cut genes. We calculated opportunity cost of Western cut genes for different consecutive points. And what is opportunity cost of Western cut genes? The amount of baggy genes, the other good, a firm would give up when it increases production of Western cut genes by one unit. Now let us try to define opportunity cost of baggy genes. This is very systematic in economics and so it shouldn't be too hard. So let me just type this out. Opportunity cost of baggy genes, how would we define it? It will be the amount of the other good you would give up, which is Western cut genes, a firm would give up when it increases production of baggy genes by one unit. So if you can define it for one good, you can also define it for the other good, provided you follow the definition. Now we know in, it, in order to measure opportunity cost of Western cut genes, we use this ratio, which is change in production of baggy genes divided by change in production of Western cut genes. So let us write opportunity cost of baggy genes in terms of a ratio. And we know it will be change in Western cut genes divided by change in baggy genes. And here you have this ratio. Now let us calculate opportunity cost of baggy genes for completion. The question you are asking is, when baggy genes, we decide to increase production of baggy genes. Now, when we looked at increasing production of western cut genes, we moved in a downward direction like this. You see increase in production of western cut genes. To calculate opportunity cost of baggy genes, what you will do is you'll move in the opposite direction. And this is where you see an increase in production of baggy genes. So now the firm is sitting at F, produces no baggy genes, decides to move to E, and decides to produce Western baggy genes, 1,000 units of baggy genes. So how much will be the change in Western cut genes? It will be 4 minus 5, which is negative 1, 
I'll just write negative 1 here and divide this by change in production of baggy genes, which will be plus 1. And what you get is negative 1. And in this way, you should be able to calculate opportunity cost of baggy genes between two consecutive points. And what you'll find is, once again, it is negative 1. Another thing you'll observe is, when you look at how we measure opportunity cost of western cut genes or opportunity cost of baggy genes, what this shows is these two are inverses of one another. For example, you find in some other uh, this thing that this is negative 100. Opportunity cost of western cut genes is negative 100. <laughs> Based on this information, what will be the opportunity cost of baggy genes, it will be negative 1 by 100. Why? Because these two are inverses of one another. Another thing you should note is the following. We have already discussed this, that opportunity cost of western cut genes is the same thing as slope of PPC. And the slope comes with a value of a negative sign, negative number, and that means PPC must be downward sloping. And when you see a downward sloping curve, what this means is you have to give up something in order to gain something, or there is a trade-off between these two goods. Now, what we have seen is the PPC for Mark Genes Incorporated was a straight line PPC. And why did Mark Genes Incorporated have a straight line PPC? Simply because of constant opportunity cost. It just didn't change. So when you see a straight line PPC, what it reflects is a constant cost principle. And what this means is you are giving up a fixed amount of the other goods as you decide to increase production of one. Now look at this kind of PPC, another possible shape. And here what you find is as you increase production of good X, what happens to the absolute value of slope that will continue to increase? Or this is increasing cost principle. As you increase production of X, you are giving up more and more of Y. And the third diagram represents decreasing cost principle. Now for Mark Genes Incorporated, we had drawn this PPC based on how many workers, machines, and so on it had. And let us just call this PPC 0. Now suppose Mark Genes Incorporated decides to reduce the amount of resources it has, maybe reduce number of workers from 50 to 20 or something like that. And so when there's a reduction in resources, the firm will be able to produce less. And what we will get is a new PPC. Let's call this PPC1. And here, the maximum amount of genes that this firm can produce in any combination will be 3,000 genes. What we saw on the previous slide is a leftward shift of PPC. And what it reflected is a decrease in production possibilities available to this firm. And this could happen because of decrease in resources or the opposite of technical progress, which, we, which I call technical regress. And so I've shown leftward shift of PPC. Now, reasons for a rightward shift of PPC or an increase in PPC will be exactly the opposite. That will be an increase in resources will increase production possibilities available to the firm. And technical progress can also do the same type of shift. This completes our discussion of PPC. Thank you for your time.